In this video, I'm going to discuss the proof of the sine function. I'm going to show you the proof visually, and I'm going to work through a numerical example too. The sine function or the sine wave is a repeating function. It oscillates. Sometimes we call it oscillating. If I take the first derivative of the sine function, I just find the slope of a tangent line, it is always cosine. Let me explain how that works. I'm going to draw in a circle. I sweep out an angle, and I'll call that angle theta. And I'm going to use radians. I'm going to use radians in this video. And you should be okay even if you don't understand radians, but I'll put a link to some videos below. This distance here is sine theta by definition. I'm going to take the same distance as measured in theta here. And so these two distances are the same. The height is sine theta on the left, and it's also the height of the sine wave. So the height is sine theta as well. I'm going to add some additional distance, and I'm going to call that h. Then this new point is sine theta plus h. I'll take this new distance h and add it to theta, so I have theta plus h. That h distance is the same as over here to the left. And the height of the sine wave at that point is also sine theta plus h. If I draw a line through both those points, it's almost the same as the slope of this curved part of the sine wave. Now, if I let these points get closer and closer together by letting h approach 0, I'll do the same thing on the circle on the left. I let h get really, really close to 0, so that line rotates around like that. The height of that line is still sine theta plus h. Slope of that tangent line is going to be cosine theta. I'm going to separate those two points to give myself some space to work. Again, I have theta and h are my two distances. I can calculate the slope of this line by doing the old-fashioned rise over run. The run distance is that right there, or h. The rise distance or that distance here is going to be sine theta plus h minus sine theta divided by the run, which is h. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that this equals cosine theta. So I'm assuming this is like a tangent line, and that slope's going to be a cosine theta. I'm going to show you how to do this numerically. I will draw back in the circle. This distance here is pi fourth. So the height is going to be sine pi fourth in both places, which is equal to 0.707. I'm going to rotate this line just a little bit, and I'm going to rotate at 0 0.01 radians to right there. It's probably closer than that in reality. I have sine pi fourth plus 0 0.01 in both places. And this new height is equal to 0.714. The slope is going to be cosine pi fourth. This distance is cosine pi fourth. And it's the same length as sine pi fourth. The slope is going to be equal to sine pi fourth plus 0 0.01 minus sine of pi fourth divided by h, which is 0 0.01. And this is equal to 0.714 minus 0 0.707 divided by 0 0.01. And this is equal to 0 0.707 right there. So it worked out perfectly. 
Don't run away. I'm going to show you a few things before I get to the visual explanation. So sine theta plus h is equal to sine theta cosine h plus cosine theta sine h. You probably don't know that off the top of your head, but you're learning it now. So if I take the limit as h approaches 0, and I plug in this new equation for the sine theta plus h, I get all of this right here minus sine theta divided by h. And this is equal to cosine theta. We organize the equation. I moved over negative sine theta. So I just rearranged the equation a little bit. And now I just take that equation and separate it into two different equations right now. It's exactly the same. And now I factor out sine theta on the equation on the left. And I just move the cosine down on the equation on the right. Now I have two separate functions. And I'm going to let h go to 0 in both of them. And on the one on the left, it becomes 0. And on the right, it becomes cosine. Now I have the circle I've been showing you. And I'm going to rotate that around clockwise a little bit, like that. Because it's easier to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to expand it, make it larger. But it's the same circle that I've been showing you all along. And that distance here is h. Now I have this triangle right here. And now I'm going to show you, on this first part, I'm going to show you as h goes to 0, it all goes to 0. The height of this triangle is sine h. Hypotenuse is cosine h by definition. And this distance is 1. I'm going to show you what happens to cosine h as h approaches 0. As h approaches 0, I'm going to rotate this around a little bit, like this, right there. And as h gets smaller and smaller, this distance and this distance are equal. Let me make h really small, those two lines close together. And now you can see that these two lines are just about equal. So as h approaches 0, Cosine h approaches 1. We'll rewrite this over and fill in 1 right there. And so this all equals to 0. In this first case, as h approaches 0, cosine h approaches 1, which makes the whole thing approach 0. Now for the second case, this time, I'm going to focus in on sine h. And I'll let h approach 0 again. So the line rotates around. And sine h becomes smaller and smaller. As h gets smaller, sine h gets smaller. As h approaches 0, sine h equals h. Let me make h even smaller now, and you'll see that sine h is just about exactly the same as h, the distance right there. So sine h divided by h is 1, and this all equals to cosine theta. So in the second case, as h approaches 0, sine h equals h, and the whole thing approaches cosine theta. There's an exhaustive trig proof that goes with this as well. And I will put a link to that and other videos below. As always, share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Links below. Like, subscribe.